Hi everyone, how are you? I am so excited to be coming to you live. I have a special guest that's coming on and we're gonna talk about a special book that this guest has just released and we are so excited about it. It's called The Way of Fertility and it's by my friend and colleague, uh, Michelle Orovitz. And let's see, I'm going to let her jump on and we're going to talk really specifically though, not just about, I mean, the book's going to be involved, of course, but really we're going to talk about why and how and how you get to know and understand that your body really wants to conceive. So, so let's um, add as a moderator. Is that what I do? Or do you work? Oh, here we go. I still get confused. So we're going to talk about all the ways in which your body wants to conceive and how to look for those ways, how to maximize those ways. And, and here she is. Yay! <laughs> Hi. How, how are, are you? you? I'm good. How good? are you? Good. Yeah. You feeling excited? So excited. Oh, my God. So excited. Yay. It's so beautiful. <laughs> it's so beautiful. I love it. It's got so, an amazing forward. <laughs> oh, oh, right. I wrote the forward to the book. This is true. Um, what did I say? Conception, conception is less about what to do and more about how to be. That's right. The sentence says it all. And that sentence is the primary reason you need to read this book. Mm, makes me emotional. <laughs> um, so, and I, what, I'll read this one sentence further. Michelle and I see fertility the same way. Fertility is not an on-off switch. Rather, it's a state of health. And health is more than just your lab markers or your age. Health mm -hmm. includes spiritual health, emotional health, physical health, and nutritional health. Harnessing and shifting fertility is about small, consistent shifts. It's about the, your way of being. In the way of fertility, Michelle captures the essence of how to be more fertile. So tell us about that, <laughs> Michelle. Tell us about that. Yes. Um, right? Because we're, we're talking, we, you know, we're, we're not just here to kind of promote the book. I mean, of course, we want you guys to go out and read it because I think um, there's not a book out there like this, right? And so I guess what inspired you to write it and, and, and tell, tell everyone about your current practice and all the things, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so very similar to you. I think that when, um, just like when you wrote, yes, you can get pregnant, you, you get excited. You start to do this work, and then you start to see really like how the body responds and that the body is so intelligent. And and then you hear about all the things that, you know, the negative things that people are told, that they can't do it. And then you're like, okay, you know, there's a fire within you that says, no, 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 like, yes, you can get pregnant. So I know that that was uh, definitely your inspiration. And very similarly, I started to, well, I, I love a lot of the philosophy of what we do in Chinese medicine and that yeah. it really like at the core, I always like to look at the essence, like what is the essence behind everything? Mm -hmm. What is the essence that makes it work? And the bottom line is, um, just look at nature. You know, yes. we have an incredible formula that is shown to us in many ways. We see it in sacred geometry. We see that sacred geometry, uh, the Fibonacci sequence, all of these things yes. that really fascinate me. They're all in nature and they constantly reproduce themselves. And so that reproduction really is that fertility in life. Yes. And we are designed to procreate. Mm -hmm. Our bodies inherently want to procreate. And when something is, you know, not working or if there's something getting in the way, there's a reason for why. And I know you know this just as much as I do. And we, we get to do this amazing kind of work because yes. it really is, it's based on Taoism, which means the way, yes. um, which inspired me really to talk about this. But like, if you are living in accordance with the way, that is when you have optimal conception, um, fertility, like just really abundance and that's when nature, nature reproduces when it feels, when it's abundant yes. with vitality. Like the cup is overflowing. That's how I always see it of like, I have enough so I can go and, and make this child, right? Versus I'm just trying to get by, I'm just surviving or I'm combating this other underlying condition, right? So I, I can't prioritize fertility right now. So it's about shifting you into that state of, right, well-being that your body's like, I... I am healed or I feel very vital. I have all the things I need and I can make this baby. And so, yeah, that's, I mean, 
obviously the core of both of our works and, and why we both, you know, are just such Chinese medicine junkies. Yeah. Um, right. But so, yeah, tell me, I mean, you know, I guess, right, we were talking with everyone here today about, you know, that your body wants to conceive. So I guess what are some of the signs and symptoms that you look for when you feel like the body isn't yet ready to conceive? And then what are what are the things you do or, and I'm sure you cover that in the book too, but maybe we get into that a bit. Yes, for sure. One of the things that I notice a lot is just, um, it's almost like energy efficiency in the body. When the body has energy leaks, I, I talk about that a lot because we can have energy leaks in a lot of ways, but one of the ways that we don't often pay attention to is when it's emotional um, because it's invisible. It's not something that we can look or easy. It's, it's not an easy thing to measure, um, but sometimes having like all of us have had this experience when we get really emotional, mm -hmm. we are zapped out. Um, and we can have that also low grade emotional draining and it can happen like that like low grade or, chronic fight or flight kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. And it's constantly, it's almost like, um, I always compare it to like apps because everybody's on their phone and everybody can relate to this, yeah, having a bunch of apps in the oh, background. Right. It's, yeah. like, it's like constantly in the background, draining your energy. And as we know, there's a reason why egg cells as opposed to other cells have so many right. mitochondria oh, yeah. right. and, um, and it, because it needs a lot of energy, like reproduction takes a lot of energy. We know in Chinese medicine, it's very, um, it needs a lot of blood and chi to yes. reproduce. Yeah. And that's why a lot of times after postpartum, people are so depleted because so much of that energy comes in. Yeah. Um, that's why seeds are so important because seeds yeah. have all of that energy um, ready to sprout. Yeah. So they're very fertile. Exactly. Right. They're very fertile. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, so that is really what, um, what it comes down to is a lot of it's energy and a lot of people um, get zapped out and they don't realize that that's even happening. Right. And that's where awareness comes in and that intelligence and really connecting with your body because your body's always speaking to you. Totally. So even having boundaries, honestly, something as simple as boundaries saying, in really you know, more than saying work. yes, or only saying yes to what lights you up. 100%. Um, you say, let's see, it's um, awareness is your superpower. That's chapter two, yeah. right? So um, yeah, I mean, I think, right so much of the teachings you know that that i have as well of just like reconnecting to yourself right hearing the conversation you have with yourself in the privacy of your own mind mm -hmm. but then also really tuning into how much i always say this like how much are you giving away versus keeping for yourself and that's where that that boundary has to come in of like no i need to um preserve this or or kind of keep it for me so that i have the resources and so how do you think people can start to measure that that's a good question i mean um it's incredible but the body is so intelligent like when we're hungry we get hangry you know like emotions actually could can happen you know you can have different emotions because your body's not happy right. um inflammation you talk about that a lot like how inflammation Inflammatory emotions can create inflammation in your body. Totally. Um, and it's like this back and forth relationship. Um, so when you start to feel better, and I do see that. So as you probably see too, like when you're working with people, you start to see people enjoy themselves, even though they're still without baby. They yeah. still haven't gotten the goal. And right. that is a big um, misconception that people think that if you're, I'm on this journey because I've right. suffered this much, I'm always gonna suffer while I'm on yeah. this journey. And that's not necessarily no. the case. It's a reframe. Yes. You can actually thrive and you can be okay during this journey. And I know totally. that sounds so hard to believe, yeah. but actually doing so will help you yes. as well. So it's kind yeah. of like the cherry on top. Um, so that's one of the things you just feel a lot better. And I talk about joy yeah. and connecting to the heart. Yeah, the heart um, uterus connection. Let's talk about that. I love that's that. My, that's my jam. It is so <laughs> amazing. And it's such a beautiful, it's just, a, it's so like eloquent and poetic. It's like this poetic aspect of our bodies just gorgeous I know. and i and i think that um what's amazing to me is obviously like part of that it, i i think of it as the heart uterus brain connection you know yes. like because heart math talks totally about the, the connection parents. yeah it's incredible because like we've been talking about this for thousands of years like what does the heart have to do with the brain chinese medicine has been saying the heart houses the brain the heart houses the brain mm -hmm. it's like you know you follow like the riddles and <laughs> it, yeah. it sounds almost like that like and so um, now they're actually proving it. They're seeing it in like measure in real yeah, time yeah. that the heart and the brain do have a connection. They have a very important relationship. As a matter of fact, the heart's more important than the brain. The heart 
has a, a much bigger right. electromagnetic. So let's frequency. break it down for them what, what that heart math or the, the heart brain coherence, what that means. Okay, so then basically there's a coherence that happens. Um, there's, they measure heart rate variability, which means basically that the heart can go up and down based on the circumstance and it can adapt. So it's like looking at stress. It's not removing stress that's important. It's more you, you adapting to the stress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can do that. That. Oh no. Did I come back? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Hello. Okay. Yeah, you froze you for me? a second. Yeah. Yeah. There yes. we go. You froze for a second. So you were saying um, it's more how you respond and adapt to the stress response. Exactly. That is something that we can't control. We can't control the fact that the stress is there. Right. That's not something like the, the stressors are there. Um, but how do you, you like respond? to recommend the heart math monitor in your practice? Do you use I that? I use or? sometimes, but sometimes I'll just literally send the heart math exercises and just like breathing through the heart and focusing on the heart center because ultimately that is what has been shown to improve heart brain, um, heart brain coherence. And do you have so those exercises they, in the book? Um, that I speak more about the heart and the brain. I don't have those specific exercises in the book because it was something that I found kind of like right. after, but I do talk about heart math. Yeah. So yeah. I do I actually discuss that. that. Yeah. I may, I may um, touch upon that a little bit, but it's basically really responding um, to like feeling in the heart. And I do have exercises in the book about yeah. that. Um, things like meta meditation, which is loving kindness and connecting to that heart and cultivating, it's called cultivating loving kindness. Yeah. Because the more you pay attention to it, the more you can cultivate cool. it. And it grows. Yeah. Um, so that is really important. So what they found was that um, a higher heart-brain coherence is linked to feelings of well-being. Yes. Um, and clarity, mental clarity. And like that feeling of that safety, like, right? So, and yeah. then the safety is what allows the conception, I suppose, right? Exactly, exactly. So it's like feeling safe in your body and obviously that impacts your hormones in so many different ways. Totally. Oh no. Did I move? Uh, am I good? Sorry guys. Sorry. Okay. You're back. I know. Am it's I back? Okay. Am I good? Yeah, you're back. You're back. Okay. We only lost you for like a second. But yeah, yeah how how that feeling of safety and peace and ease and, and that there is a direct impact on the hormones, especially the reproductive hormones. Um, so, right. It's like that whole theory of like, is stress impacting fertility, which nobody likes to hear. It's very, I feel like that's. I, I think the reason why people don't like to hear it is because they don't know what to that, do about it. That's right. And, or and just it's like, like how, what do I, I have to like, put my job and move to, to like yeah, some island in, in Fiji? Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's it's kind of impossible, absolutely. So it's lear more about learning how to adapt. And that's what you yeah. really get into in the book, right? Yes, I give the hows, I give the tools, um, you know, and then there's no pressure because like there's nothing, there's no, there's no way you could do this wrong. Like even crying and feeling it oh, out totally. and being in I that love that. Space there's no way you could is, do this wrong. It's all yeah. like, um, it's all beneficial. Yeah, and so you talk about that too of like, what did you call it? Like, uh, what's the word? The magic of flow, but wait, I just saw it. Oh, the power of release, that's chapter nine. So that's yeah. where you're talking about like, feel all the feels. Like it's not about not having stress or not having negative influences. It's more about kind of recognizing, right? It, creating that boundary and recognizing, oh, when I do that, I feel this way. What can I do to either protect myself Self, right or manage in the in the moment correct and it's um it's really about shining a light um on your whole life as a whole yeah and there's always going to be beneficial um, there's always going to be a beneficial outcome to that and that's what we do as practitioners we shed light to what is really happening in in the body and the mind like in every aspect of the person's being we ask all kinds of questions yeah. right about poop about sleep sure. about dreams sure. about like just everything matters um, and when you shine that light, it is like knowledge is power. When that's why I say awareness is your your superpower because yeah. you're simply shining light and then seeing what that is. And through that, that is when you have the opportunity for growth, and you know an opportunity to improve the fertility from that aspect. I love it. I love it. And so um, yeah. So I guess in the book, what do you think are some of like the the real important pieces for women on the the trying to conceive path. I mean, obviously understanding the connection between I think the heart, the sorry, the brain, the heart and the uterus mm -hmm. 
um, and in kind of honing in on that, um, creating healthier boundaries, understanding the power of release. So tell tell us kind of more. If I that. can, if I can, if I can just focus on one thing. Yeah, it would be love. Aww. And I love that. Okay. Um, because love is life giving, it is ultimately so powerful. They've even found that elevated emotions and yes. intention combined is what really creates manifestation. Um, it's the emotion. It's that energy of uplifting yeah. emotion. Yeah. Um, and so having that love and love doesn't mean being happy all the time. Right. Love can actually look like self-compassion and allowing yourself to cry and take a day off and just snuggle in, inside, you know, in your bed and kind of curl up. Um, it's really about that compassion, that like being there with yourself. And forgiveness, so, right? Uh, right? Love is forgiveness. forgiveness. Yes, yeah. yes. And so um, it's really so healing in so many ways and it's life giving. And I talk about all of that. I talk about how important love is early in the years. And I say that it's important for babies. Now um, it is because they, they cannot survive without love. That's right. So why wouldn't love also be important for conception? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. of course it is. Babies are made out of love. I feel like, you know, that's yeah. um, one thing I love to say too. And it, it, and it doesn't like even, right. Even talking about women going through fertility treatments and, and IVF, it's like, love doesn't just mean like in the bedroom love or that you have to make love to make yeah. a baby. Right. It's really yeah. about the intention around it. And, um, yeah, I guess the energy you're giving it, right. And the energy you're giving yourself while you're creating the eggs, even if you wind up doing IVF, right. Or the sperm. Yes. I often say, send your embryos love while they're yeah. growing in yeah. the Petri dish. Like, because we know that quantum entanglement yeah. like yeah. Is, is a thing. And so that, and you are for sure entangled with your own cells. I yeah. mean, it's in your body, you're totally happy. entangled yeah. in your, your own DNA, which really holds information. So um, I think we're scratching the surface, but we're going to get to this point where that becomes mainstream. Yeah, that we are right. entangled and, and there is an energy and intelligence that is way more vast than we realize. Well, just like we realized a decade, maybe, maybe it's 15 years ago now about epigenetics, right? Forever we were told your genes are set in stone. These things are genetics. There's nothing you can do about it. And now it's like, oh, actually 95% of diseases are not inheritable. They're you might have a predisposition, but how you live your life, right, totally. dictates whether they turn on or turn off. And Chinese medicine has been saying that for thousands of years. And I think it's the same thing that there's, we're starting to see now the gut brain connection, right? We're understanding, oh, antidepressants actually treat IBS. Why is that? You know, so it's this really interesting connection. But, and I, I think heart rate variability is really being used by a lot of more of the functional medicine, like biohacker type doctors, the regenerative medicine crew, totally. They're looking at that heart rate variability stuff. And so I, I do agree, like the science is catching up to these theories and these phenomenons that um, it's so much more than just physiology, if you will, or or maybe chronology maybe is a better way to put it. And it, it has a lot more to do with kind of our day to day and um and our feelings and, and their impacting, right? We also know that from um I talk about that in body belief as well. Like the placebo and the nocebo research is really clear. Um, yeah. this is the the mental you know the belief systems play a tremendous role in how the body heals and so and you get into that a lot in in your book as well which just fell on the floor um let me grab it uh, yeah <laughs> it, it fell it, when you started saying can i say one thing and it, it was love it literally shot off my lap oh that's so there you go so you know. there's a sign there's a sign <laughs> yes. um yeah so uh, you know the you know, on the back, we talk about as a transformative guide to living in accordance with your innate state of harmony in order to reawaken your fertile potential. And so I think this is just a great bedside read for, for anyone on the journey to, re especially like I find, and I know you find too clinically, because you and I talk clinic stuff a lot um, offline, that the emotional piece is kind of the hard hardest to tap into or the hardest to harness right because mm -hmm. it's so abstract and so you Correct. actually are giving them very tangible tools to connect yes. and to become more aware and to awaken that fertile potential 
Yes. And I'll tell you, I mean, I think a lot of us, we're in this field because it's impacted us in some way, or we've learned yeah. a lot how to navigate our own world. And I've made so many changes to myself. I mean, when I was younger, I used to suffer from depression. Like, I know a lot of this because I've lived it. And I also had irregular menstru menstrual cycles. So I, I know that a lot of it was all interconnected. And mm -hmm. I also discussed that in this book. I'm a product of infertility, yeah. secondary infertility. My mom struggled to have me, thought she was going to lose me multiple times during her pregnancy. Um, so, you know, those are all things that I've learned over the years. And that's in, your, and that's in your DNA, too. We know about that, about ancestral, like what's passed on to us. That's becoming clear in the science as well. That's not just like out there, oh, ancestral trauma. It's like, no, this is actually what happened in when you were in utero is impacting you 100%. 100%. And I think that working through that, like, I feel like I was, this is my calling. Like, I, I can say that with 100% certainty. I have done a lot of work to get here and personal work myself, like just my own transformation. I have people say, like, I can't recognize you. You are not like this. Meaning I wasn't excited. I didn't have my shit together. Like, I was a mess when I was younger. <laughs> I had my, like, I was not, and they were like, oh, like, you're different. <laughs> And it's all work that I've done, and I figured out ways to do it where it's easy. Yeah. Like, cut through. Let's get to it. I mean, what works, what doesn't. Let's not waste time on what doesn't work. You know, what doesn't work is telling somebody, relax. No, that does no, not work. That doesn't work. Like, it's it's really about yeah. thinking up and kind of really understanding. And so I guess if we were to say from a scientific perspective, this book is really about regulating the nervous system, isn't it? Right. And about yes. like, yeah, it's huge, huge part. Yes. Huge part. And we're seeing that as, as, and I think we always have from a Chinese medicine perspective, but as a, as a leading part in this, even when it comes to digestion, right? If your nervous system is not regulated, you're not going to absorb 50% of what you're eating or the supplements, right? We have to regulate first to then be able to receive even our nutrition and our supplements. Oh my God, 100%. So true. Um, and it, it really is like your nervous system is your your ability almost to understand information. Because yeah. like, think about it. It's almost like the like the, the conduit yes, to, to information. To receive. Yeah. And, and energetically, right, to get and stay pregnant is to be in the receiving mode right and so that's yeah. really what this is is getting into the receiving mode yeah and i think that it's so unconscious we don't realize that we could be in the kind of acting going out of the way to do things and that's okay that has a place that's the young energy yes, the totally. doing we absolutely need to do that we have it for a reason it's necessary sometimes we can get lost in that though yeah. And sometimes it's important to go back into the yin and call in rather than run after. Right. And there is that balance. And like, like, you know, we talk about, you know, the masculine energy, like, like all the doing, doing, doing all the taking supplements and all the, all the things, which of course we support well, and recommend, totally but it is very much in the masculine checking the boxes and what we're inviting most of our clients. And I, I just had a call this morning, which is the, we ended the call with me really, you know, as I would summarize, I invited her into her yin. Like I invited her to like come back home to like, what would you do when you were pregnant? How would you raise these children? Is this the energy you want to bring children in with? And, you know, it was like stunned her. Like she was like, oh, you're, she, and then, you know what she said? She goes, this is exactly why I'm doing this work. Like she was so excited because she's like, this is, I need this reminder because I'm so like masculine in my day-to-day -day life. I'm so masculine in my approach to fertility right now. Yeah. I need to be reminded. And right for us, it's like, we're calling you back into like your divine feminine, 100%, which is. 100%. And I think you and I can both agree. Like we need to be reminded. Like I coach 100%. with you, you coach me. Yeah. I need, you know, even the coaches need coaches. Totally. Like. I have coaches. We all need yeah. to be, there's nothing wrong with needing to be reminded. So that's what I want to say is that yeah. it's it that is the beauty of like really yeah. connecting with other people that we're not islands and that we can receive that from other people from other perspectives. Totally. So beneficial. So someone just asked, how do you call in? Question mark. So I'll let you answer. Okay. So I love to use this. Okay. So um, a lot of times this is a saying that I heard. Prayer is talking, meditation is listening. So when you're listening, you're able to receive. Mm -hmm. And sometimes listening looks like just listening to your body. Sometimes listening could be calling in by saying that prayer and allowing yourself to receive 
by observing, mm -hmm. watching, being the watcher, being the observer, you're always taking in information. So when you're training yourself, that's why I love meditation, it's practicing listening. Yes. And the more you practice, the easier it becomes. At first it could feel very foreign, and at first it could feel very jarring because yes. you're all of a sudden aware of things that you're like, oh crap, this is not fun to hear. But it's, um, it's important to just sit with it and have faith that you can handle sitting with it. I love that. And you offer meditation style things in the book as well, right? I do. I have lots of meditation exercises, sometimes balancing the yin and the right. yang, right. Um, receiving, releasing. Like so you have, you have call in meditations in the book. So I think, Lucy, this is where you start of working on that and then the book is available now for sale tell me it is i'm forgetting it's out it's on amazon it's there you know uh kindle version i really all the oh, all the places i i books like uh, i love Barnes it and, Noble, and, um, version. and you know it's funny too like that lisa miller um gave an endorsement and I just got into that book, The Awakened Brain. And it was so funny because I like in my head, I didn't know until just the second that she endorsed this book as well, that I was reading that book and thought of your book. I was like, oh my God, this is like what Michelle is talking about. And I'm fascinated with that book. And that's another one guys where it's like, what I like about Lisa Miller's work too, um, is it's highly scientific and it's really correlating the importance of spirituality to longevity to happiness to health right you know where it's like so it's it's all i think it's also really backing up what you're talking about from a fertility perspective that like we're putting ourselves the more spiritual we get and you don't have to be religious to be spiritual but right. just, and the spiritual is really about being connected and kind of believing not kind of believing in a connection to if you will we would call it the heavens in chinese medicine but like to the spirit to the guidance that surrounds you to the wisdom of your body that that is is you know in in, in psychological research really showing a connection to less depression longer mm -hmm. living healthier happier living right so yeah. i don't know if you want to talk about that a oh little it bit. literally rewires your brain your yeah. brain looks they, they study the brain and it looks different for people who believe in a higher intelligence and you could say just high inter higher, higher intelligence, intelligence. Like if you okay. want to say because like if, if you're more kind of like analytical i yeah. always say it's a higher intelligence yeah. what do you think runs your cells right. i mean how do your cells know what to do right how does your heart know to pump every single second of every single day yeah right. and and there was a saying or somewhere i heard that scientists at first become atheists until they really get into the science and then they and then they like believe that there's a higher intelligence that was me i, just watched I was 100 percent an atheist like a hundred percent and some of you might judge me for this i was raised in a catholic family i looked at catholicism and thought like a bunch of hypocrites more because of my family structure and what it was so i'm not judging that all catholics are hypocrites but what i witnessed i was like what is this and then went through that period where i was i used to say like i'm agnostic not atheist that was like my joke mm -hmm and then got into like the more of the spiritual side of things and now i mean y'all see me at church you'll see me praying you'll see i'm like back i, I and i'm proud of yeah. myself that like i but same thing i was but you're back a scientific on your own, brain on that, your own accord like yeah you, you're back from your heart that's it i own got i got feeling. reconnected i yeah. was disconnected because i was judging and so and not rightly so right i thought it was hypocritical and that was my judgment i had to actually i did a lot of forgiveness work which really got me back to heart center um anyway it's it, that's my yeah. sharing but i i think it's really true in in that world of highly analytical people where and i think we see that a lot though too in fertility is because especially if you're on the the hamster wheel of fertility treatments or going to the doctor everything becomes so scrutinous everything's oh, about your labs everything's about your antral follicle count and your amh and all the things and how you're performing the analytics of it all that you get completely disconnected and you think it's all beyond your control right and so i i feel like that's what we really do is we we bring women back home like come back mm -hmm. home to your body i want you to start like and maybe we do that through diet i want you to start to listen how do you feel after you eat that how do you feel after you do that right but even more what does your inner intelligence tell you and it's like no i'm gonna have this baby okay all right so let's stay connected to that where we can right and i think that's really what you're 
you're helping women do in this book yeah. and partners. Yeah. Right? I, I do have a story. I, so I have a coaching client who um, was doing all the things. Yeah. She was taking yeah. all the supplements, doing everything right. when she first met me. Um, her body really responded against doing IVF and it wasn't like forever. It was for that time. Now she's actually ready. It's like three months later. However, she had an old Dutch test and this is when she was taking all the supplements, doing all the right, right. things. We work mostly actually on mindset. Um, there was one thing that we did was remove right. gluten. Okay. So, but her oxidative stress lowered it? and it was like, it? it was, a, it was dramatic. Um, what we saw, there were other dramatic changes, um, her metabolism of, uh, estrogen. Right. And, and I was like, that's interesting. Cause I wasn't, because she already had all this stuff. She worked with a nutritionist before I was like, this is the only thing really extra. The main thing was the mindset. And the meditation, she started meditating 20 minutes a day. And and to me to see that, like it, it was just unbelievable. Well, and just so you guys know who aren't familiar with the Dutch, we use the Dutch, like it's a urine hormone analysis, but there's these um, organic acids on the, the last sheet of the Dutch that and they test, you know, your B12 and your B6 and all these things. And they have an oxidative stress marker. And I use that marker as a sign of egg quality. And you probably yes. do too, because it's telling me how much oxidative stress, which is basically aging, rusting in the body, how much inflammation and how it's impacted the cells. And so that the lower the number, the better on that test. And so same thing, it's the first thing I go to when I do a Dutch, I go to the back and I'm like, what's your oxidative stress yes. marker? So that's, that is, that's phenomenal to see that decrease, I mean, especially as like, she got older. She's because months older. What, because what science tells after. us is the opposite. You're only going to get worse with age. And it's like, no, 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 actually, that's not true at all. Um, yeah. Oh, I love yeah. that. That's great. And so, so TBD, right? Is she going to start IVF now, but in a much better space? And she'll we be able to receive those she hormones be better. We'll yeah, see. Cool. Um, okay. she, she's going to check her pregnancy test. Um, this was the first month that she felt oh. like completely free mentally. And she didn't, it Amazing. was like she surrendered. She feels so happy. She still doesn't have baby, but she's happy. I see her yeah. and she's like, I just feel so good. Aww. You know, it's happiness on the way. Yeah. That's the goal. Right? More like, vitamin whether it's J. natural yeah. or IVF, I'm okay. That's good. Yeah. Well, and that's, so we'll that's the open to receiving though, too, of like, even what that, well, uh, I think Lucy was your name who called, how do you call it in? I think that's the part of it too, of, um, I always think of Deepak Chopra of like between point A and point B, there's a million ways to get there. Your only job is to be open to the possibility of getting there and to be open to like, there's lots of ways I can get there instead of saying, exactly. this is the only way this, you know, I'm working so hard and like really focusing on the grit versus focusing on there's so many ways like baby's coming you know and i'm gonna i'm along for the ride in a sense yeah. um and going to enjoy my life as as i'm along for the ride yes and you deserve it and i think that yeah. that is where the self-compassion comes in because love yourself enough to give yourself yeah. that that break that joy that moment that love that caring that nurturing mother yourself right like yeah you, you know start start, start with there. mothering yourself start there well, and I, I do, I mean, I, I think that's a lot of it is, um, you know, when, when we're working with our clients is just seeing, and there are a lot of to-dos, right? And I think I, I always say like, and I'm at fault too, I give a lot of to-dos to my patients, but Me it's too. more about like then <laughs> co maybe compartmentalizing them, but also starting to see it as like, instead of thinking like, oh, it's so hard to do this diet. It's like, oh, I really enjoy this meal. Like that's what my homework assignment to one of my coaching students yesterday was I want you to just go through you know the book and and highlight the recipes that excite you that's what yes. that's where we're going to start yes. what yeah. excites you what do you want to cook you right. know and so um yes yeah, someone said self-care is hugely important I mean it really is and it's also and and for some women it's easier to think about it like how will I be as a mother or how will I treat my body when I'm pregnant and so to start that mentality in preconception right that's versus I'm going to do that when I'm pregnant no 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 you're going to do that now Yes. And, um, and, you know, a friend of mine, Clarissa Briones, she actually oh, was yeah. on the fertility journey and she also does coaching. And she mentioned something that I use all the time now. I mean, you're literally mothering your cells already. Your yes. those cells that are supposed to be babies eventually are already in your body. Oh. By loving yourself, you're loving your, your cells. Oh, I love that. It's yeah. so true. Yeah. 
And to think about like that energy you want to bring through, right? If we also know a lot about the, you know, the, the impacts that we have when baby is in utero on the, the future of their lives. Um, I think that's another really, you know, that should, that should be such a motivating force for so many where it's like, what I do now impacts not just my child, but my grandchildren. And so even if that right. child isn't, isn't here yet, even if it's not in utero yet, like your actions now, and we know that scientifically, that's right. not something we've made up or hasn't been shown. Um, someone said, I've really enjoyed your page and followed. Um, well, thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. um, but to, to think like more macro versus micro versus like, I need my FSH and to increase my AMH and I need, you know what I mean? Like my antral follicle count is so picture. low, that's super micro, right? Yes. We want big picture. Yes. We need, we need one egg guys, one egg, you know? So like, think about it like that, you know, and, and that the child's palace and the uterus connection to the heart, like all of that. I mean, it's just, yeah, that was, that's what sold me on Chinese medicine. I still remember the day and where I was, where I was like, sign me up. I'm, go I'm going to this school. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm a it's medical so school dropout. It's official. Like, yes. I'm, like, I'm it looks at the out. body in such an eloquent way. Uh -huh. It's so, it's so poetic. It, it just it brings a spirit to help. Yeah. Like there's a spirit to it. Yeah. Okay. Love that. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So tell everyone where they can get this beautiful new book, The Way of Fertility. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Matching, oh, let's take a picture. Uh, can you hold that up? I'll screenshot. Um, okay. I'm going to do it. Let me just, <laughs> and we'll post. Yay! <laughs> okay. Okay. Awesome. Um, I'm doing um, every tip you are giving. I just know it's going to bring the rainbow baby. Oh, well, Sarah, we're excited aw. for you. Um, and Sa uh, Kasha, I am grateful for this and every advice. I love it. Yay. We're grateful for we're you guys. And we're- You guys so much love. Yeah, we're cheering for you. Yeah. And, and let, you know, I think too of like, um, I, I guess to be super blunt, like we're not bullshit artists. Like we actually believe you can do this. We totally believe this is doable. And yeah. we also are so spiritually connected. We also really believe that if there's a desire for a child, there's a child that wants to come through, right? And so it's about reconnecting, not perfectly, but like almost like enough to align the portal to open up and bring it through. Do you know what 100%. I mean? 100%. Amy, I love you. I, I really do. Like I've always loved your message and I always connected with you because I feel like this is why you're my mentor. Aww. Because I just, I feel like you're like, you're so connected with people. I feel like this is why you're my mentor because i just feel like um you get it you get it like you see it you get it and you're you're connected too and it's it's a spiritual thing for you it's a calling yeah, for you totally. and it's uh, yes. i love it I, and, and and that's the beauty i think that that's why we're so drawn to chinese medicine the richness yeah. of what it can offer humanity is incredible yeah agreed it's incredible agreed. yeah i love that yeah it's beyond fertility it really is and and also right neither of us you know, I, I'll say it openly of like, I'm not in this for the positive pregnancy test. Like that's for you and that's the cherry on top. I'm in this for you to be in your power to then be the mother that this child needs in this world. Amen. Um, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I love it. Um, what is this? Just waiting uh, on my re-up of Rejuva. <laughs> P.S. My acupuncture said these supplements going to give you Gucci brand <laughs> Love that. I think I might That's adorable. I might quote that. That might go on the website. I mean, that is so good. Fertility leave. Kudos to your acupuncture. I love that. Oh, look at this one. Did you see this? Fabif, I'm not going to say her. Fab, Fab, if Lauta. Favorite fertility ladies. I'm pregnant at 46 and I credited it to both your teachings. Oh we my love God. that. Oh. If you ever want to do a story of hope, we're, we're here. We'll, we'll do one all yeah. together. That'd be fun. Um, Gucci brand, haha, ha, love it. Yes. Um, I agree. Yeah. All right. So so I, I think we are we can get this on Amazon um, on and Amazon, on your website, if, right? Yep. And my okay. website. If you, go to my, um, if you go to my page, my Instagram, on the first link, it says uh, my link in bio. It actually has a website to the book. And if you guys want, you could, there's a free chapter often. You can check that out. Yeah, do the free just, chapter. See if it's a, a good fit. Yeah. I love it. And then, and then uh, you have some, like, you know, you have, a, you have a lot of resources that go along with the book as well, right? Correct. I do. I have resources, um, lots of, uh, yeah, lots of goodies. Oh, I love it. I love it. So, yeah, you guys check it out. 
Um, and I'll do this for you since, since it's not always comfortable doing it yourself. Mm -hmm. If you read this book and you love it, or you just love Michelle, go and leave an Amazon review for this book because it really helps her reach more people. Okay, guys. So do that as a good solid to this woman because she gives you so much of herself all the time. So you can do this for her Thanks. and it helps her. Yeah. Yes. It makes me want to cry too. <laughs> oh, I love but it's helpful. You. I, I like, love I love, you. adore you. you too. I love you You're too. Really and I'm proud of you. And I'm proud of this. And thank uh, you for asking me to write the foreword. That's, you know, it's an Yes, honor. of course. Like who else would write it? <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Um, okay. So we're going to let everybody go buy the book. We can't wait to hear how you love the book and we can't wait to see your Amazon <laughs> reviews. And um, yeah, I think it's a beautiful bedside read. I think it's really like soft and warm and nourishing, you know, so it's going to feel like a nice, um, not like all these to do's. It's more like, oh, that feels so good. Oh, I'm going to try that. You know, it's it's more welcoming and, and um, I don't know, easy. I think it's an easy read. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. Okay. We're going to let you all go and I'm going to go make myself some nourishing lunch before my next call. I'm sorry. And, too. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Go, go eat. Let's not starve ourselves. And uh, we'll check in later and you let me know how everything's gone with the book. Okay. Yes. Okay. Kisses to everybody. Kisses to you, Amy. Bye, this is awesome. Great. I love Bye. you. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye.